What's up guys? This video is for anyone wanting to emulate DS and 3DS games on their Steam Deck in a way that feels authentic to the original hardware. If you just want to see what you need and how to put this together, feel free to skip forward to the 4 minute mark. Right now though, I wanted to show a comparison of a few games being played on the Steam Deck next to the original hardware. We'll start that off with some Mario Kart on a DS Lite. I know it's probably overkill, but I'm slightly blurring out the gameplay on the Steam Deck in an attempt to avoid any kind of copyright strikes on the video. It's the same gameplay on both consoles though, so hopefully you can pretty much tell what's going on. The only noticeable extremity from the front is the cable plugged in at the top. Other than that, I think the second monitor looks pretty natural sitting above the built-in screen. It's about the same size and has no brand logos around the edge. The emulators we will be using in this video are Melon DS for the DS games and Azahar for the 3DS games. Both of these emulators work seamlessly on the Steam Deck, and I can vouch for how good the gameplay looks. Here is a size comparison to show how much bigger of a picture you are getting on the Steam Deck. It's really cool to see all the small details you may have missed on the smaller screens. The next game I want to show you is Professor Layton and the Curious Village. The reason I picked this one is because it's a game played pretty much exclusively with a stylus. For full immersion, you can get one of these stylus pens off of Amazon for super cheap. It's got the soft tip on it, which makes it touchscreen compatible and is pretty reliable as long as you push hard enough. I'll provide a link to the one I'm using in the description. You could always just use your finger as well, but then you're not getting that DS experience. One thing you may have noticed on these DS games is that you can see the taskbar at the bottom of the screen as well as the title bar at the top. Melon DS, which is the DS emulator, does have a feature for separating the two screens, but not until version 1.0. I personally have not been able to get that version yet on my Steam Deck, but I'm sure it will become available eventually. For now, it just requires you to stretch one window over both screens. Then you just need to adjust the properties in the settings to make it all look good. Later in the video, I will show you the exact configuration I use. For the 3DS, we've got Pokemon Ultra Moon. I wish I could say this awesome retro NES edition 3DS was mine, but I was only borrowing it from my brother-in-law to make this video. Here you can see how I full screen two separate windows, one for each screen. This is a feature of Azahar, and thanks to that you don't see any of the desktop features like the taskbar or title bar. This is what we should eventually get on Melon DS as well, and it just makes things look super clean. If you are wondering how I put those windows in full screen, it was by pressing one of the back buttons, L4. I'll show you later in the video how to set hotkeys to your back buttons. For a little background on this video, the project started from a desire to buy a 3DS and homebrew it. Once I learned they were upwards of $300, I decided to just emulate on my Steam Deck instead. I had the same idea I think a lot of people have had, which was putting a second screen on the Steam Deck for that DS experience. I looked through several Steam Deck subreddits and YouTube for a way to accomplish this, but the existing solutions looked very awkward and heavy with no real instructions on putting it together either. So I spent about a month of research, trial and error, and sending products back to Amazon to find the ideal build so you don't have to. What's great about this build is it's very minimal. The extra screen is a portable monitor that's lightweight and thin. It also only takes a single USB-C cable to power it and give it its video signal as well. Here's another size comparison, and honestly the 3DS XL had an excellent top screen. Overall though, the Steam Deck is definitely larger and has a better picture, especially for the bottom screen. Now let's talk about what you need for this build. First of course is your Steam Deck. I've got the OLED, but this should work for the LCD model as well. In addition to that, you'll need the kill switch case from D-Brand. It's the circular tri-lock mounting bracket on the back that is most important for this build. I'm not sponsored by them or anything, but I highly recommend their products. Next up is this 7-inch LCD portable touchscreen monitor. It's got 1080p resolution, 60Hz refresh, weighs only a third of a pound, and is very thin. I wasn't able to find an OLED screen that worked for this build. You can see on my monitor I already have the magnet attached to it. This is the cable that comes with the monitor which we will use for setup, but then replace it with this 5-inch flexible USB-C cable. It has a 90-degree angle plug-in as well as a straight side. 
Next is the products from GetMechanism.com. First is this adapter, which makes the kill switch case compatible with the other products by fitting in its mounting bracket. Then we have this magnetic strip that you will stick to the back of your monitor like you saw on mine. Lastly is this phone mount, which attaches to the Steam Deck, and then via the magnets attaches the monitor. This monitor weighs less than an iPhone, so these magnets have no problem holding it. If anything, it's tough to get it off and has survived many shake tests I conducted. I'll have links to everything in the description. Now let's actually put this thing together. First grab the adapter. This arrow is going to face the top by the end, but first you rotate it about 45 degrees counterclockwise, and then insert. It's almost impossible to turn it all the way with just your bare hands. So you will want to go ahead and grab the phone mount and insert it like so. Once it's in there, push this lever down to lock it in place. Finally use the leverage to turn it until it stops at the top. You're about halfway done already. Now let's adjust the phone mount to a good spot for holding the monitor. First you will want to loosen these keys so you can adjust their angles. Then you can adjust it forward into a position similar to this. Just somewhere in this general area since you're going to be moving it again in a second. Put the Steam Deck down. Grab the monitor with one hand and the phone mount with the other. Place the monitor in a spot that looks good to you. I like to have it slightly tilted forward. Adjust the magnet on the phone mount so the monitor is laying flat against it. Once that position looks good to you, let's lock it in. First the bottom, then the top. It should feel very sturdy. Now you can double check the spot by laying the monitor on it and adjusting as needed. The ideal spot for me is sitting right on top of the steam deck with no real gap. You adjust it how you like though. For this next part, we need to be in desktop mode. Go ahead and hit the power button to turn it on. Hit the steam button and then scroll down to power. Select switch to desktop. You can only use two screens while in desktop mode, which is why we're switching. Grab the long cable that came with the monitor. Plug the straight side into the Steam Deck. The other end will go into the monitor. One important thing to note is you must plug it into the middle port here. I can't get it to focus in this shot, but it is the one labeled as USB-C 3.1. That port can get power and video signal in one. You should see your second desktop screen come up. The slack on the long cable makes it so you can freely move the monitor around for setup before switching to the short one. Now that we can see the left and right edges of both screens, we can use them to line up the pictures more accurately. Once you are 100% sure on the position, you can remove the adhesive covering. Mine's already on there, so I'm just pretending. Once exposed, carefully lower the monitor down while tilting forward so it's not touching the adhesive. Line up the picture first and then slowly tilt it back onto the sticky side. Give it a firm press from the top and bottom edges to make sure it sticks. I wouldn't do it from the sides. For me, I left it like that overnight so it would really get stuck, but an hour will probably do. Now we can switch out the cable since we don't need the slack from the long cable anymore. Straight side will go into the Steam Deck again. The other end goes into the monitor, and again, don't forget to put it into that middle port. They actually line up perfectly, which was a nice surprise. And with that, you have completed the hardware portion of the setup. Congrats! Really all this build boils down to is a portable monitor, one cable, and a phone mount. It only increases the weight by less than a pound according to the specs online, and it's very sturdy. Overall, I think it's a super clean look compared to some other builds I've seen. First thing to do after hardware setup is fix the screen orientation and resolution. You'll notice you can't move your mouse upwards to get to the second monitor. You instead have to move it off to the side. 
The mouse will also appear a lot smaller on the top screen. That's because the resolution is larger than the Steam Deck screen. Click the arrow here and then go to Display Configuration. Click this icon in the corner for detailed settings. Drag the second monitor on top of the built-in screen. Then change the resolution to 1280 by 800 to match the built-in screen's resolution. Then line them up straight. Took me a few tries. Hit apply and then keep the configuration. Close out of the display settings window and see that you can now move freely from top to bottom. Also you'll notice the mouse will be the same size. And there you have it. Your dual screen handheld Steam Deck is fully functional as a computer in desktop mode. I'll just show you real quickly how to adjust brightness on the second monitor and then we'll move on to emulation. Press the second button from the left to open settings on the monitor. It's a touch screen, so just use your finger to adjust the brightness or turn on eye protection mode. Then you can close out with this button. Lastly, you'll notice here that the touch screen is about an inch or two off from where you press. Upon looking into this, it sounds like this is an issue with any touch screen you plug into a Steam Deck, so nothing we can really do about that. It's not needed anyway. I'm not going to give a full-blown tutorial on how to set up EmuDeck as there are already a ton of videos on YouTube that have got that covered. I'm just going to go over some basics. Go to a browser in desktop mode and look up emudeck.com. Go to the downloads page and choose the Steam OS option. That'll download an installer which you'll run and then get a desktop icon like this. First time opening, it'll ask you which emulators you want to install as well as where you want to install your games. I highly recommend you get a micro SD and put all your emulation stuff on there. If you missed one of the emulators, you can always just go to Manage Emulators and select it from the list. Azahar is the current and best 3DS emulator. You can just hit Install here. Melon DS is the Nintendo DS emulator. Let me show you where your games will go. Like I mentioned, I have all of my Emu Deck files on my inserted micro SD here. Click on Emulation and then ROMs. First, for Nintendo DS games, we will go to the NDS folder. Bear in mind that games are copyrighted, and you should only use ROMs for games you legally own. It is up to you to figure out how to source them. These ROMs should end in .nds. For the 3DS games, they will be stored in the N3DS folder. For Azahar specifically though, the games will need to end with .cci. If yours ends with something else just right, click them, hit rename, and adjust it. When you open up your Azahar emulator, it's going to automatically populate with all the games in this folder. Next, let me show you where and how to launch your emulators. There's probably a better way to do this, but this is at least how I launch them. Go into the same folders and this time look for one called Emulators. Inside will be the executables for any emulator you have downloaded through Emudeck. Let's take a look at Melon DS and the best configurations for it first. Click on it and then hit Execute to launch it. To run your games, click File and then Open ROM. If it doesn't open directly to the NDS folder, just navigate to it with the same path from earlier. For configuration settings, feel free to just copy exactly what I show here. This is what seems to work the best for having the window stretched across two screens. You can always customize it how you want though. For the input and controls, these should be set automatically. If they're not for some reason, it's very easy. Just click the button you want to map, and then press the best corresponding button on your Steam Deck to set it. Let me show you real quick what it looks like to launch a game. Now we'll check out Azahar. When you launch it, it will automatically populate with any games you have in the N3DS file like I mentioned. Before we launch one, let's go over the best settings. Go to Emulation and then Configure. Pause the video as needed and copy what I have on each page. This system page is for setting things like your username and birthday if you feel like it. 
You can also give yourself as many play coins as you want, which is a currency used in some games. Definitely make sure separate windows is selected here so you can have the separate screens. Again, feel free to adjust the settings however you want. This is just what works for me. If the controls aren't set automatically, let me show you how to map them. First, full screen this window so you can see everything at the bottom. Next, we'll need to switch into gamepad mode by pressing and holding down the start or three line button. When you see this pop up, you're good to go. Next, hit clear all and then auto map. Press OK and then simply move your right stick. Everything should be automatically set for you. Last thing to go over is hotkeys. Here is a list of all the hotkeys you could use, but the only ones I care about are F11 for full screen, which will set to back button L4. Then the other one is F5 for stop emulation, which will set to L5. To set the back buttons to specific keys, we will need to open Steam in desktop mode. You can do that by clicking it on the desktop. Click Steam at the top left and then Settings. Go down to Controller and then we're looking for non-game controller layouts. Make sure you are in gamepad mode again so we can navigate using the joysticks and buttons. Click Edit, and now switch to using the controller instead of touchpad. First make sure Enable Back Grip Buttons is turned on under the Desktop tab. Next to L4 click on its box, then under the Keyboard section select F11. Now let's follow those same steps under the Gamepad tab. Next to L4 click on its box, then under the Keyboard section select F11. For some reason after you make any edits it'll switch back to the Desktop tab. So make sure you switch back to gamepad. Now let's set L5 to F5 the same way. Again, switch back to the gamepad tab. Click on the gear icon next to L5. Select regular press and then click long press to update it. This will make it so you have to hold down L5 to activate it. That way you don't accidentally close out of the game if you were to bump into that button. You could set R4 and R5 as well. When you do start playing one of your games, make sure you are in gamepad mode, or the controls might not work. Now that we're done with all the settings, let me show you how to launch and set up one of your games. Open Azahar, then just go ahead and select the game you want from the list and double click on it. You should see two windows launch. Put the game's top screen up on the second monitor and the bottom screen down on the Steam Deck screen. Now click on one of them and press L4 to full screen it. Repeat for the second window. Hold L5 when you want to close emulation. Lastly, let's launch the Melon DS emulator and extend it across both screens. I'm going to speed it up because it can be a bit tedious when using the touchpad. Once it's fully covering both screens, go ahead and launch a game under file and then open ROM or open recent. You should be all set now. If you have questions, let me know in the comments and I'll try to respond. I've got a couple of extra functions to show you as well. I got my Steam Deck specifically so I could play my Steam library while sitting on the couch with my wife. I often get neck strain though from looking down at the Steam Deck even when I have it resting on a pillow. While in gamepad mode you can only use one screen. Plug in your second monitor and it should auto switch to it. Now your line of sight angle is a little higher reducing neck strain. Also you can play on a 1080p screen so that's a bit of an upgrade as well. Last thing I'll mention is just a fun bonus. In desktop mode while having two screens, I like to play low resource games like Vampire Survivors while also watching music videos or anime on the top screen. It can do both no problem and is a fun use of two screens. Thanks for checking out the video and I hope it can help anybody who is also looking for a dual screen setup. This was my first video and don't have plans for another. But if there's something else you guys want me to look into, just let me know in the comments.